Welcome to a new series. Uh, this is go. This series is going to be on what I call elementary number theory. But let us me be very clear. I am not a number theorist. But for two reasons, I want to give the series on video records. Number one. Even if you want to learn modern mathematics, especially groups, ring speeds, etc., one of the standard examples have to do with the motivating example was always numbers, integers, and other things. Okay, so one has to learn those things very thoroughly. Usually, teachers take it for granted, then they immediately jump into that. That's number one. Second, most important reason for me is that. Many students in the last forty years or so always say, "I understood the proof. I am unable to write it. I can solve the problem, but I do not know how to write a solution correctly." Okay, and this will be a very good training ground because in the first few lectures you will see most of the proofs are only essentially one-line proof. But if you write it as a proof, as a textbook, you will be some three, four lines. So you just learn to master this kind of thing. As I keep saying, if you want to improve your writing, of course that's an art. Only it requires practice. So what you do is you start with the very simple proofs. Okay, a solution or a proof which involves only three four lines. Try to make it very cogent. Okay, very proper order. Okay, only with practice you then you can move on to something like slightly bigger pro. Things like a lemma or a slightly bigger problem, which you know about, eight to ten tall lines proof. After that, you can go back to big proofs. Really, this is a secret. Okay, but remember, the most important thing is you have to practice. Okay, so we will get there. And there is a third reason because. Ah, uh, since I am not an expert in number theory. Whenever we invite people at MTTS camps to give lectures, number theory experts, okay, then they only concentrate on numbers, okay. There are a lot of concepts which are involved, and that takes a back seating, because you can see number theory. There are a lot of problems you can create. What what I call some kind of you know parallel game, okay, like Olympiad type. You can keep on creating. You just want to say you can do that. But uh, that's not my aim here. My aim here is to make number theory as a kind of prerequisite for modern algebra, and as a training ground for writing proofs. And third, conceptual introduction rather than simply going through, okay, some arguments or Olympiad type problems. Okay, I am not good at that, so don't expect anything from me. Okay, and. You will see. I have not given any reference because there are just too many books now. Must be about ten, ten, ten thousand, twenty thousand books on number theory alone. So I don't want to pick anything, and mostly I am not going to follow any book either. And but, what important thing is that it will be good. You have a pro book, and so that you can do a lot more problems. Because as I said, I will be concentrating only on concepts, but problems will be less. And one more important thing, if those of you who are already advanced learners like masters, MPhil, PhD, etc., you may think these things I know, so I skip. But remember, if you have problem in writing a proof, please go through it patiently and improve your writing skills. Okay, this will certainly help you. I am going to show you how. Okay, let us get started. So this is my channel, youtube.com backslash c Kumar Isu. That's a channel, and anything related to uh, the videos, this channel, please write to this email ID. Don't write to my other email ID. Okay, you can also download the list of my videos, which are available on this channel from this place. The the reason why is the list is very comprehensive. It gives description. It gives the URLs or links of the videos, and they are arranged in proper order. If you want to learn a subject from the beginning, how to go through it, okay? 
and thanks to some of you, you okay it, the update will be periodical it will be announced through my channel okay let me just check whether I turned on the recording yes okay so I'm going to assume all of you know natural numbers and set of integers and this and R we will have less to do with R but some other concept like absolute value etc it will be useful to know that okay the first thing I want to define is the notion of divisibility so I have two integers a and b in z I want to say and I will assume a is non-zero then I want to say a divides b okay and if if notice that there is a logic involved there is a quantifier involved if there exists an integer k in z such so that b equal to k k times a okay so you see that so a divides b so suppose i want to say 15 and 3 divides 15 then the only okay we usually denote by a divides b then i have to find an integer namely i can write 15 as 5 times 3 okay and suppose I want to say 112 okay and let us say 4 divides this okay then I know what it is okay I have to write 112 as 3 times 2 times and 8 times 4 now how did I get to 28 of course that is what is known as long division which we had been doing from high school on so from elementary school or primary school onwards as learned in primary school okay that is 112 divided by 4 2 times 4 is 8 32 and 8 times etc but that's not the thing we are not dividing the only thing when I want to say a divides b the only way is I can I have to exhibit or I have to find a k so that b equal to k a is that clear so pause review proceed there is nothing like remainder or anything long division okay a divides b simply means there exists a k learn this quantifiers involved okay in the definition quantifiers are involved please learn it well okay those of you who are bsc students should look at my foundation course crash crash foundation course videos there are four videos please look at them okay the first question I can ask suppose a divides b notice that when I want to say a divides b I will insist a is non-zero okay we always insist on that what does it mean if I write somewhere without mentioning a divides b you should assume a is non-zero okay I may not say it explicitly okay let's come back so suppose if when I say a divides b I know there exists a k so that b equal to k a maybe there exists also an m so that b equal to m a then I want to say question is whether k equal to m sorry okay that is very easy if b equal to k a also equal to m a therefore I have k a minus m a is 0 that is k minus m into a is 0 right now a is non-zero therefore that means k minus m is 0 that means k equal to m understand therefore the that such a k is unique so okay this this k is unique you see that I'm not saying I'm canceling okay don't say I'm canceling k equal to m a cancel a therefore k equal to m don't say that the proper way of writing that would be okay doing like this 
therefore k equal to ma that is k minus ma is 0 using distributive law it is k minus m into a is 0 product of two integers is 0 that means at least one of them is 0 and a cannot be 0 therefore k minus m must be 0 you understand these are the this is the logic so so p or p try to write this proof okay so learn to write this proof how will i write it a streamlined proof or a textbook proof okay how will it look assume that b equal to ka equal to me hence we have ka equal to me or ka minus ma is 0 by distributive law using distributive law law we have we get k minus m into a is 0 k m, m into 0 since a is not equal to 0 ok it follows that k minus m is 0 hence k equal to m that's it ok you see that the idea is very easy this is how you work but when you want to write down the proof you have to write a kind of complete sentences ok we are starting with the assumption b equal to k a equal to m a then we are doing therefore we are concentrated only on this part k a equal to m a and then we bring both m a to the other side therefore k a minus m a is 0 then we, we say that we are using distributive law to get k minus m into a is 0 right and now we are saying since a is not equal to 0 ok the product of two numbers is 0 k a is not equal to 0 therefore k minus m is 0 that means k equal to m hence such a k is unique is the proof ok ok alright so now one usually say when a divides b ok we also say a is a factor of b and b is a multiple of k but sorry multiple of a etc yeah because b is k times a therefore is multiple multiple meaning is a plus a plus a right k times but if k is negative you should know what it means i will come to that later ok so as I if I say minus let us say minus 10 equal to minus 5 times 2 that is I want to show true zero is minus 10 ok then minus 5 what does it mean this is same as 5 times minus 2 right therefore it is same as minus 2 plus ok plus minus 2 plus minus 2 5 times ok now let us make okay now we are going to list so I am going slow and even if you are an advanced student please pay attention learn to write this kind of proof do not say it is very easy because what you can do is as you can say this equal to that equal to equal to therefore etc but you will not be able to write a complete sentences make it a rigorous proof okay so you have, that requires a practice and it is an art only if you practice you will learn it please do that ok now I am going to do about 7 or 8 or maybe 10 I do not know various things ok each one will be only 2 line 3 line proof ok I will explain I will go first to 2 or 3 I will give I will first explain the proof and show how to write a textbook proof ok but the rest I will only explain you Pause the video, try to write down your own textbook proof. Okay. Do you want to master the art of writing correct proof? Then be patient. Okay. Do it. Don't shirk away. Don't go away from that. Thinking that, oh, I know that. Okay. This is for your sake. Do it. Okay. Now let's say first thing is A divides A. 
remember when i say a divided by a is non zero that is very clear okay how do i prove that if i want to say a divided by a that means i have to find okay i need to find i am just showing i need to find a k so that a equal to k times a but that is very easy take k equal to 1 then a equal to 1 times a equal to a right so how do i write a proof okay since a equal to 1 times a okay it follows that that a divided by a that's it that's all the proof it's a one line proof okay since we know that we are simply writing that okay by taking k equal to 1 if you want okay next and if a divides b then i want to say a divides minus b okay so how will i write it a divides b therefore i know b is k times a i want to say minus b minus b is minus of k a but we know minus of k is same as minus k times a also equal to k times minus a which one i am going to prefer i will prefer this therefore i write minus b equal to minus k times a and this is an integer because k is an integer therefore minus k is also an integer therefore a divides minus b is that clear so this is a proof now how do i write a proof okay proof i will write it since a divides b there exists an integer k in z so that b equal to k a hence multiplying both multiplying both sides by minus 1 we get minus 1 times b equal to minus 1 times k times a but minus 1 times b we know is the additive inverse of b and minus 1 times k is minus k times a right therefore hence and since minus k since minus k belong to z it follows that a divides minus b okay all right now next thing i am going to prove if a divides b and a divides c i want to say a divides b plus c okay how will i do that since a divides b then me i know b equal to some let us say k times a a divided c therefore c equal to m times a where k and m are integers right therefore b plus c equal to k a plus m a equal to k plus m times a by distributive law and this is an integer call it r therefore b plus c is r times a where r is an integer this shows that a divides b plus c okay see this is how you will write thing work out the proof but how will i write a proof okay since a divides b there exists k an integer so that b equal to k a similarly since a divides c there exists an integer m in c so that c equal to m times a hence b plus c equal to k a plus m a equal to k plus m times a equal to r times a where r is k plus m is an element of z here we can therefore we therefore conclude root a divides b plus c okay pause review proceed now do you see this way of writing and this way of writing this is what is you know, we will find as a textbook proof whereas this is working this is how we will work out so if you write like this okay then you will never learn the art of writing complete sentences and turn it into a proof as you would see in a textbook that is why i say please practice these things 
okay now let's go to the fourth one okay assume again a divides b and a divides c what is the next question i can ask whether a divides b c now proof is again exactly similar b is k a and c is m a therefore b c is k a m a by using associativity and commutativity of multiplication that is k m a a so call this r times a where r is k times m times a so this shows a divides b c okay now how do i write a proof again the same way a divides b since a divides b there exists a k in z such so that b equal to k a since a divided c there is an integer m in z such so that c equal to m times a hence we observe that we know that we find that we know that whatever you want right okay these things are all your choice this is k a times m a now this is k times m times a times a and this is equal to r times a where r equal to k m a here we are using what are the rules we are using we are using associativity commutativity right of multiplication hence a divides b is yeah now let us combine 3 and 4 together so see we have 3 2 and we also did yeah we will also do one more thing 5 suppose a divides b and and c is some integer then i want to say ca divides cb if c now notice that since i want to say ca divides cb okay since i know a divides b by our convention a is not zero but when i said take c an integer then c may be zero c times a may be zero then i cannot talk about c dividing c ca dividing cb you understand i hope to ensure ca is non zero how do i do that therefore i put an extra condition c is non zero in that case i want to say ca divide cb right but that's again easy this time i am not going to write the proof therefore b is ka therefore cb is ck c into ka which is ck into a which is m into a where m equal to ka therefore okay ca divides cb okay and sixth one here pause review proceed okay okay pause the video write down a textbook proof now remember one of the aims for this series is to train you to write so don't okay be lazy write down this pause the video write down the proof and restart okay and now the sixth one if a divides b and c is any integer then a divides cb okay now notice that c is any integer i am not assuming c is non zero that is very clear because then b is k times a therefore okay what is cb cb equal to c times k times a which is ck times a which is m times a where m equal to ck right therefore this is true again 
pause the video write down the rigorous proof write down the textbook proof so seventh okay now what do I want okay now I want to combine the earlier results suppose a divides b and a divides c x1 y are integers okay then I know a divides bx or xp and similarly a divides cy and hence I know a divides bx plus cy do you understand this yeah why does okay another proof is over but you should learn how to write the proof this is okay I am going to show that okay since a divides b then by 6 we know that a divides bx because given x is an integer and similarly since a divides c and since y is in z if you want you can also write here and since y is in z okay by 6 we know that a divides cy then by I don't know I think maybe 4 3 yeah if a divides b a divides c then a divides b plus c by 3 a divided bx plus cy okay pause review procedure now my exercise is understand this proof okay then pause the video and try to write down on your own understand this proof pause the video Three, write down a textbook proof. So, in particular, okay, in particular, if A divides B and a divides c then a divides b plus c we are know a divides b minus c and a divides 2b plus 3c or a divides 10 10b plus 19c all such thing yeah i just want you to get used to that okay now let us use it before i go to something else let me use this to solve some problem okay some interesting problem why these things are important suppose I want to have 4000 rupees okay in 1 rupee denomination and 10 rupee denomination and 100 rupee notes these are all currency notes okay right but so how many currency notes I want to have I want to have a many rupee 1 notes and b many 10 rupee note and c many 100 rupee note but what do I want I but I want to say the total number of currency notes must be 100 this is the number of currency notes but how much money I will have 8 times 1 rupee therefore 8 times 1 plus b times 10 that will be 10b therefore 10 times b plus 100c that must be 4000 you understand that so notice that a b c are naturally positive integers okay they are all integers and all of them are non-negative so i want to know whether i can do that can we do this 
So understand the problem. Okay, I want to have 4000 rupees, but what do I want? I want it to be, I want to have only 100 currency notes. I am ready to have A currency notes of denomination 1 rupee and B currency note each is of 10 rupees and C currency note each is of 100 rupees. So, how many currency notes I will have? A plus B plus C must be 100. But what should be the amount? A is A times 1 that is A. B currency notes of 10 denomination therefore 10 times B, 10 B and C is each is 100 rupee therefore 100 C. Therefore, A plus 10 B plus 100 C must be 4000 sorry I wrote 4. Can we do that? Okay. So, using high school techniques algebra you can solve for these two equation set of okay system of equations what is that that is a plus b plus c equal to 100 and a plus 10 b plus 100 c equal to 4000 right then try to see that uh, you will get lot of solutions in fact infinitely many and you will find a b c none no solution is integral solution that is okay any solution call it a b c or a triple okay of this system okay and they are not integral solution that is either a is not integer b is not integer or c is not an integer but I want A, B, C to be all integers. You understand this? But let's uh, let's not worry, worry about solving this equation. Instead, we will show why it cannot have. So subtract the second from the sorry, first from the second. Second equation minus the first minus the first equation. That is equal to you see that A minus A zero, ten B minus one B will be nine B. This is nine and nine B, right? Therefore, what do I get? I get 9b plus 99c equal to 3999. Is it okay? Now, what do I do? Now, you see that 9 divides the left side. Right? That is 9 times b plus 11c. Right? Therefore, 9 divides, so call this as a number, okay, D, then 9 divides D. Because I can write as 9 as, okay, D as 9 times B plus 11 C, remove B and C are integers, assume the integral solution exists. Okay, and do this. You understand? Right. Therefore, what do I know? Since D equal to 3999, 9 should divide 3999. Okay. I know 3 divides 3999 because I have 3999 equal to 1333 into 3. Okay. If I want 9 to divide, then I should be able to write 1333 equal to some something times 3 ok so by usual uh, long division you know if you want there are other methods also that 3199 is not a multiple Nine. you also have the far way you know divisibility test you add the integers ok the digits then that digit should be divisible by 4. The digit is going to be 27 plus 3, 30. 30 is not divisible by 9. That is very easy to show. Yeah? Right. Again, if you don't want to use long division, how will I do that? Okay? But I will cheat. I will actually do long division. I will cheat it. That is, what will I do? 3999 divided by 9. 4 times 9 is 36. 39. 4 times 9 is 36 and 39 4 times 9 is 36 
and I am left with 3. Therefore, I know 3, okay, 444 times 9 equal to 3996, okay, but it is less than 445 times 9. Therefore, 3999 cannot be, it is like 3999, and that is less than this. Right. Therefore, 3,909 is greater than 444 times 9, but strictly less than 445 times 9 that you can check. Therefore, this is not a multiple of 9, but remember, I am cheating. I am using long division. But anyway, come back to the thing. What you have done is, okay, I have said there is no integral solutions of A, B, C. Okay, you might find it's a very long winded road, but try to think of it in slightly. See, I allowed A, B, C to be any integer. So, there is a possibility A, B, C could also be negative. What does it mean? Okay. Do I, I want only natural numbers. Did I, where did I use that fact? Can you understand what the question? I just want to make sure that you, do, you all of you understand that. Yeah. For example, you can see I want them to be positive. So, so I have to put a condition that these are all positive, and A, B, C are all natural numbers. I said positive because I can always say forty times hundred. Okay or 30 times 130,000 and this will be 100 times 10 that will be there or 90 times then the 10 times okay you see that but the point is the numbers should add up okay think about this problem uh, I okay pause review proceed my okay my purpose was that I cannot solve this even if I allow a b c to be negative I cannot do that that's the point I'm trying to say okay what does that mean you have to understand what do you mean by a is negative b and c are positive etc you can understand but I don't want to get into that but try to go through this okay right the next one okay let me see what are the other things I have to do is there anything else which I have to do? Okay, yeah, important thing. This is uh, an example. And what did we do? Seventh. So let us do eighth one. Eighth one. Suppose A and B are natural numbers. And suppose I say A divides B. Then I want to say A is less than or equal to B. Right? Let us do that. Suppose since A divides B. That means B equal to some K times A. Notice that since B is uh, positive, A is positive, B K also is positive, right? And K is uh, an integer, therefore it is a natural number. And K is an integer, these two things put together say K must be negative. Therefore, K is greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, B equal to K A, but K is greater than or equal to 1 and A is positive, if I multiply both sides, I will have KA is greater than or equal to A. Therefore, greater than or equal to A. So, I proved the result. Okay. Now, how will I write a textbook proof? Okay. Let B equal to KA. Since B and A are positive. We know that. Is that K is K is positive. Since K is in Z, we conclude that K is a natural number. Hence, K is greater than or equal to one. So multiplying. both sides 
of this inequality by a, the positive number we get k times a is greater than or equal to a. Hence, b equal to k times a is greater than or equal to a that this or it follows that b is greater than or equal to a. Pause, review, proceed. Again, do you see that? It's very easy. I only have to observe k is greater than or equal to 1 multiplied by a both sides. k a is greater than or equal to a, but k a is b, therefore b is greater than or equal to a. That's it. But we have to write the proof. It comes to something like 4 or 5 sentences. Okay, these are the things. Just to learn to write these things, practice on your own, you will see big proofs also come out easily. I will tell you the trick later. In the same course, I will also teach you with a big proof. Okay, how to make it in smaller pieces, each small piece will be easier to write. Okay, we will learn that. Okay, therefore, now let us see, now this is 8th I think, right? Let me go to 9th. Now let us look at 9. If A divides B and, okay, A and b are integers and b is non-zero yeah here I should see now I forgot this okay both are natural numbers you understand that yeah come back right then I want to say mod a is less than or equal to mod b why notice that if a divides b okay I know that a divides yeah, in fact, I, maybe I should first observe this, observe the following. A divides B. We had already proved one way, minus A divides B. That is if only if minus A divides minus B. That is if only if A divides minus B. These are all equivalent. A divides B if and only if. Okay. So, call this one. And this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. One of the standard tricks in mathematics is to prove this equivalence, you say 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 4, and 4 implies 1. Okay? Then these are equivalent. You understand this? 1 implies 2 we might have already seen, but I will just quickly go through that. If So, let us look at 1 implies 2. A implies B, therefore B Okay, now I will not write b equal to k times a. Right? Therefore, this I can write as b equal to minus k times minus a. Right? Therefore, it is m times minus a, where m equal to minus k. Therefore, it shows minus a divides b. Do you know how to write down proof? Pause, review, proceed, write down the proof. Now let us do 2, two implies 3. I do not know what is 2, what is 3. Minus a divides b. Minus a divides b should imply minus a divides minus b. So minus a divides b, therefore b equal to some k times minus a. Right? Therefore multiply both sides by minus b, therefore minus b times minus 1 times k times minus a. Therefore it is minus k times minus a. Therefore, minus a divides minus b, okay, and so on. So, pause the video, go through the proof, pause the video, go through the proof, just write down. After that, write down a rigorous proof also, 
okay please do not be lazy do that it's for your own good okay very good so what is our assumption now we assumed here b is non zero okay Oh, see, I wanted to prove this. Yeah. Now let's go back to nine. Now I want to say, go back to nine. I want to say a divides b implies mod a is less than equal to mod b. Now remember, mod a must be either a or minus a, and mod b equal to either b or minus b. But if a divides b, then I know mod a will be one of them. A divides mod b because a has to be this or this. You understand this? Yeah. Suppose mod a is a, mod b is minus b. Then we can use it. A divides mod minus b. Right? A divides minus b. It follows. And similarly, all other cases. Okay. Just make sure you understand this. Right? Now I am saying a and b are non. A is non-zero, and B is non-zero. Therefore, mod A, mod B are natural numbers, and therefore mod A divides mod B. This implies by by our by eight. You understand that? So, how will I write a textbook proof? Just for fun, let us do that. Since A divides B. Okay. Okay. We claim that mod A divides mod B. Okay. With the loss of generality, assume that mod A equal to A and mod B equal to minus B. Other cases are treated similarly. Then by the observation and of four equivalences. Equivalences. We know that A divides minus B. Hence, mod A divides mod B. This is hence. Okay. Since B is non-zero, mod B is a natural number, and A is also mod A is also a natural number. Hence, by Eight, or I think eight or seven, yeah, by eight. Mod A is less than equal to mod B. Is it okay? We prove tenth one is this. Now suppose A is an integer, of course non-zero, and A divides one. Then I claim mod A must be one. That is A equal to plus or minus one. That is very clear. Since a divides one, we know that mod a is less than equal to mod one, which is one, right? A divides b, therefore mod a is less than equal to mod one, which is one, right? Now, my but remember, mod a is non-zero, therefore mod a is a natural number, which is less than equal to one. That means mod a must be equal to one. Therefore, a must be plus or minus one. Do you understand this? Pause, review, proceed. Okay. Hopefully, with this, I will stop. Now, suppose a and b are natural numbers, and a divides b, as well as b divides a. Then, what is the thing I want to claim? A equal to b. That is very clear, because a and b are natural numbers. By eight, a is less than equal to b, and this b is less than equal to a, and hence I claim a equal to b. As a corollary. Okay. As a corollary, what do I have? If a divides b and b divides a, that means mod a equal to mod b. Remember, when I say b divides a, a cannot be zero. Sorry, a, b a cannot be zero, and when I say b divides a, b cannot be zero, right? Therefore, mod a and both are natural numbers, and we know if a divides b. Okay, if a and b are this are non-zero, 
then that implies mod A divides mod B. Right? But if mod A divides mod B, we know that mod A is less than or equal to mod B. And since B divides A, this implies mod B divides mod A. Therefore, mod B is less than or equal to mod A. Therefore, I have mod A is less than or equal to mod B, mod B is less than or equal to mod A, and hence equality. Please notice that don't assume these are all obvious. Go through that every time we are using something non trivial. Okay? Right. Now, as before parting, let us do something a very simple exercise, okay, uh, which we also use induction. Let us say I want to say 6 divide 7 power n minus 1 for every natural number n. You can do anything like 4 divide 5 power n minus 1, etc. The same proof. How will I do that? So, we will prove by induction. When n equal to 1, 7 power n minus 1 is 7 minus 1, which is equal to 6, therefore 6 divided 6. So, this is clear. So, assume the result n equal to k, that is 6 divided 7 power k minus 1. So, now to start with say n equal to k plus 1. Then 7 to the power k plus 1, I want to prove this. So, start with 7 to the power k plus 1 minus 1. This I can write as 7 I can take out, this will be 7 to the power k minus 1, but what do I want? I want to say 7 power k minus 1 is divisible by 6, 6 divides this, right? Therefore, I should bring it to that form, you understand? I am trying to tell you how to solve a problem also. I have to make use of this hypothesis, where I have 7 times 7 to the power k minus 1, that's not good. So, what will I write it? 7 times 7 to the power k minus 7 but plus plus 6. But now you can take 7 out. This is going to be 7 to the power k minus 1 plus 6. Right? But this, since 7 to the power k minus 1 by induction hypothesis, this is some multiple. 7 times k times 6 plus 6. Therefore, it is 6 times 7k plus 1. So, see, 6 divides 7k plus 1. That is the proof. Okay. Please go through the proof. So, these are all the things I wanted to prove about divisibility. Okay. In the next lecture, I will talk about division algorithm. But, please, if you want to improve your writing skills, how to write proofs. I understand the proof. I do not know how to write. If you suffer from this syndrome, from this symptom, please go through these things. Okay. These are all very easy. Three line, four line, five line proofs. Write it. Okay. And do not worry about whether, how correct it is. Just write. I already given you some four or five samples. Go through that. The same way you try to write. Okay. And slowly you will see it will be very coherent. Okay. It's not simply as I wrote in the before I wrote down the formal proof, you see how I proved it? That's how you write it most often. If you write this kind of thing, you will never learn how to write a complete rigorous proof as you find in textbook. Please do that. You will learn number theory. You will also learn how to write the art of writing proof and the concepts also you learn. Okay, the concepts which will be very useful for algebra later. Okay, stay tuned. Take care, we'll meet again.